all my beautiful people of the world, it is the Creative Rush here, and today we are doing our tutorial on how to make third person melee combat in your own game in Unity 3D. In our last episode, we worked on, well we didn't work on anything, we played Infamous Second Son, which gave us our example on what we're going to be doing in this episode. And Infamous Second Son is pretty fun. <laughs> I got to be stuff with chains. Wapa, wapa. Yeah! Okay, so if you follow the tutorial correctly, you should end up with a little something like this. You'll have your character in your scene who has any melee weapon of your choice. I just picked a sword because it was at my disposal. You will be able to walk around, and when you do, your character will rotate in the direction that you're moving. Then when you stay still, it will he will not rotate at all. Because infamous. This is usually your typical RPG controller when you have a third-person RPG. But then the real, like, big part of the tutorial is actual combat. So you'll be able to swing your sword, as so. And then when your sword touches an enemy, they'll disappear. And then if their sword touches you, you lose. You're gone. You're dead. And, alright, so I guess we go into Unity now? I, th I, think, that's what, I think that's what happens now? Alright, good. Alright. To Unity! Alright, now that we're in Unity, you're going to want to create a directional light and a terrain. So, we're going to start by creating our third person controller. Now, I have a prefob set up, and it's named RPG Third Person. This is going to be the character we're going to use. I'll go over how to make it. So, first you're going to want to start off with a third person controller, which you can create by just going to Standard Assets, Character Controllers, Third Person Controller. Drag that into your scene, then you'll see this hierarchy, and you're going to want to delete a script called third person camera, because the camera won't work with our scene and what we're trying to do. But to replace it, you're going to want to create a camera, drag it into your controller, and then add the script mouse orbit OTS. Now it's pretty much just the exact same as mouse orbit, only I added two variables Y offset and X offset and Y offset. I'll go over that real quick just to show you what that is. So here we have our mouse orbit OTS script. Now the only thing I did differently from the actual mouse orbit script was I added two variables, X offset and Y offset, and I set them both to zero. Now we're gonna go down here and where it says vector three, X offset, Y offset, minus distance, the X offset and Y offset and the regular mouse orbit script should say zero. You're going to change that to X offset and Y offset. Okay, so after you've dragged that in your main camera, we're going to go over what those variables do. This just adds a little bit of versatility to the camera. X offset can set the camera left or right to the player, and then Y offset, you can make it go up and down. Our Y, we're going to set to 1. This will make our camera go a little bit above the player. Our X offset will remain 0 because that's what it was in Infamous. And our distance, I estimated around 7 would be good. So now we want to create our weapon. Our weapon is going to be a sword. I have already have a sword right here in my scene. I will give you a link to the asset if you want to download it. We're going to want to set to the side of our character. Adjust it just like so, so it kind of looks like it's holding it, sort of, a little bit, not really, but okay. We're going to make sure it looks okay when we rotate it, because we're actually going to have a swinging motion to our sword. So we're going to set it about right here, and drag it into our third-person controller. Now, with the sword there, I want to demonstrate the movement, because with our character as it was, we wouldn't be able to see the movement. But now with the sword, we can see what the rotation looks like. As you can see, we have our camera rotate around the player, but then when the player goes to move, they rotate with like the direction they're moving. So if we move sideways, they'll be rotating sideways, and as such. Oop, just bumped my microphone. I gotta get a new pop filter, because there's like this giant stick sticking out, and I keep nudging it all the time. I need to get one of those ones that just wraps around the microphone. That'd be so much easier. But now what we want to do is add a new collider to our sword, and here's why. We want to do that because with the collider, we're going to use that to detect when it hits something. So we're going to go into our sword, we're going to get rid of this animator, don't know why that's there. Add component, box collider. And we're going to scale that to the same as the blade. 
can want to adjust the height and stuff like that first. All right, that looks about right. So now we have our sword with our new collider. Oh, and by the way, set that collider to is trigger. Now we have our sword, it's all ready. And now we're gonna make it so you can actually swing the sword. So we're gonna go to swordswing.js. So here's swordswing.js. And here's how we're gonna be swinging our sword. Now you'll see there's some oddly named variables. Whoops, didn't wanna do that. But you'll see there's zoom and orbit OTS in there, which aren't actually part of our script. The only reason they're actually there is because I recycled this from an old aiming script. So that's why I have like zoom in, all that stuff. So for zoom, you're going to have var zoom. Dot well, var zoom is a float, which is a number. And I'll set, you can set that to whatever you want. We have var normal, which is a float. Our smooth, which is a float. This will be how fast our, our uh, sword rotates, how fast we swing it. And orbit OTS, which is what it rotates. So you have our zoom in, private var zoom in equals false, which means it's false. That's not really all you can explain about that one. So we have zoom in equals false by default, but if input get button down, which means if the input fire one is held, then zoom in will equal true. And if zoom in equals true, which is if you hold in fire one. So if zoom in equals true, orbit OTS, which is what it's rotating, will transform its rotation X axis to zoom. Else, which is also zoom in equals false, it'll equal, it'll be normal. So go ahead and close that out and save. Sorry, we're going to have to go back and edit that script again. I have it pulled up right here. Where it says X, we want to change that to Z, at least for my rotation purposes. I don't know what it is for yours, but for me it's going to be Z. I forgot to change that for mine. All right, so now that we have our Z axis ready, we're going to change our smooth to 10. Orbit OTS will be set to sword, wherever that is. I have mine game object. I'm going to rename that sword. We go. Normal, which normal will be zero, and zoom will be ninety. So we swing our sword at a ninety degree angle. Let's see how that looks. Now you see when we hold left click, our sword swings. Now, what I'm pretty sure most of you came here for was the combat system. So to do that, we're going to want to create some enemies. So we're going to take our capsule and duplicate it, drag it out, and we're going to make three enemies just so we can show some versatility in our game. So we're going to duplicate that twice more. And I'm going to color them red just so we can signify that they're enemies. We want to give them all these swords. So we're going to duplicate our sword. Drag it out from the first per the third person controller. Also do that with the capsules. Whoops. And you're going to give all of them a sword. Now for their swords, you don't want the sword swing axis. We're just going to have them hold out their swords. On this side. Rotate at 90 degrees so their sword is sticking out. Whoops, wrong axis. Wrong axis again. Get it, get it get it together, Connor. Wrong way. <laughs> Cannot do things right. Alright, but now they are holding the swords. We're going to give them all a sword. Attach it to the corresponding capsule. And now give all of them a sword. Now, for the fun part. And this is where it all comes in, where we actually learn how to fight. So I have a script called Sword, and this is actually a C-sharp script, which I usually don't do. 
but this is a special occasion, I guess. So let's do that. All right, here we have our sword.cs script. So we have using Unity Engine, which means that we're using the script in Unity, and using system coll collections, which I honestly do not know what that means. <laughs> I'm more on JavaScript than C Sharp, but whatever. Public class sword is a mono behavior. That's just saying that the script we're using is a mono behavior. So you have our public, which is like a variable for in JavaScript. So our public is a game object, and we're going to call it player. So void on trigger enter collider player. So that means whatever this script is attached to, when its collider enters player's collider, then player game object set active false. This means that the player's game object will just turn off. It'll be gone or its renderer will go off. But that's a secondary command. So we're going to have player game object set active false. So go ahead, save that and close it out. And we're going to drag it in our sword. Actually, we want that in the part with the collider. We want this in the part of our sword that has the collider attached to it. I um, have my sword with one has an empty game object and the other is the actual mesh. But usually you'll just have the mesh. So drag it into your sword. The player you're going to want to set to one of the enemies. So that'll be R capsule 1, 2, and 3. We're going to want to have three sword scripts in R sword because we have three enemies. So now we should be able to fight all these enemies. But before it actually works, we have to assign all of our castles a rigid body. Now they all have a rigid body. Let's go ahead and hit play. So now we're in play mode. You can see we swing our sword. And now when we go up to an enemy, we should be able to win. So we swing our sword and they're gone. Swing our sword at them and they disappear. Same with them. But now we can st we don't die when our we hit their sword. So we're going to add the same script, the sword script, to all of their swords. So take sword, C sharp script, and drag it into all of their swords. Now for their player, it's going to be our third person controller. So find our, your third person controller and set it as a player for all these scripts. Now if we go into play mode, you'll see that not only can we kill the enemies, but they can kill us too. So I can go over here, swipe at the enemies, they lose. But then if I hit the enemy, I lose. Our character is gone. And that, everybody, is how you make a third-person game with melee combat. Uh, be sure to check out the first part where we played Infamous Second Son. It was a lot of fun. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials or fun gameplay I should do, leave it in the comments or message me on my social medias. I have a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. Also, just send me a chat request if you want to chat or something. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you want to keep up to date on my latest content. And since there's nothing else to say, I'll see all you guys in the next video! See you later, and happy developing.